Our Baron Sama D guy. We're going to be starting off by buying Baron's Brew. Uh, this is actually one of the unique features of Baron's passive. Uh, I don't need anti heal this game, so I'm actually going to go Lost Artifact and two mana potions as well as beads uh, because they have an Ares getting our one at level one. So, right off the bat, we can start talking about part of Baron's passive, which is his Baron's Brew. Baron's Brew uh, is basically a potion that when you have a Baron on your team, you can buy. So not only can I buy it, Pele, it's Nami, everybody can buy it. Um, you can see most people have opted to buy it. It is a uh, regenerating potion, much like the way the Chalice of Healing regenerates when you go back to the fountain, it regenerates. And for all intents and purposes, it is a jacked uh, multi-pot. It is just basically a slightly better multi-pot that you can have three of, and it regens when you go back to the base. That's not all of Baron's passive, though. Uh, the second part of his passive is when targets are at max hysteria, they take an additional 20% damage from Baron's abilities. So those are the uh, two parts of Baron's passive. Baron's one is what we are going to be starting with. This is your uh, level one lane clear ability, but it is not the ability that we are going to max out first. You throw down your one to clear the wave. It is a solid damaging ability. Um, there is two individual beams. You do not get the full damage of both beams onto, uh, onto the same target. Uh, if you hit both beams, uh, the second beam uh, uh, does uh, does does less damage. I gotta try to save my Pele here. We're gonna be fine. Uh, so you do do more damage overall okay. by hitting both beams, uh, but it is not uh, double damage for hitting both beams. You get 80 on the first one, and if you hit the second one, the beams cross over where you're aiming. Enemies hit by both take 15% damage on the second hit. So only a little bit of additional damage from that second beam. But not only does that, uh, does the one do damage, Another Patriot has it also applies 10 Hysteria. Hysteria is part of Baron's passive. People can have anywhere from zero to 100 Hysteria on them. Uh, you can see Hysteria. Uh, when we attack an enemy god, you'll see a little symbol pop up by them. That is the symbol for their Hysteria, kind of their craziness, which is a different mechanic uh, kind of than Lulu's craziness. Bad. Uh, if they are above 30 Hysteria, so they have to already have at least 30 Hysteria on them. And if they are, you get a massive debuff on the targets. It is a really good 30% power reduction and 30% attack speed reduction. This applies for magical and nice physical power. Still got good tech out here. Uh, and that and that debuff lasts on them uh, for a hot minute. Our second ability, and the ability that we are going to be ranking up max on Baron, is our Consigned Spirits. This is a circle ability. Um, does solid damage, but that is not the reason why uh, we max this first. The reason why we max this first is because of this next part. It is a heal, so it does damage. It's a heal to you and your allies. So not only will this heal you, this will also heal your allies. Um, this heal does not proc, as you can see when I'm using it on minions. It only procs on an enemy god if that enemy god is above 30 hysteria. It gives you a missing health heal of 10%, plus a flat heal, Plus it gives you 25% movement speed. Plus it cleanses you and all of your allies of slow effects. It does all of that. A cleanse, a movement speed buff, 10% missing health heal, plus a flat heal to everybody in the radius of this. That is a huge ability. And it also applies 20 hysteria. Unfortunately, I got hit by the cuckoo wall. I'm against a Robin this game. 
Robin is one of the worst characters for Baron to possibly go against. Baron is like B plus tier right now. B tier solidly in the okay faction. Um, Robin is extremely good against him because of the way that he can avoid uh, the CC in your kit. Baron has pretty good CC. Your third Robin ability and the ability that you will rank up last is called Wrap It Up. Good advice from your parents and also the name of this ability. What it is going to do is it's going to be a small bleed. It is going to be a small bleed. Um, onto your target as well as a small, da it's a small damage over time for 2.5 seconds. Um, it's the, and it is a slow with a ramping up route. So basically you are slowed by a little bit at first and you're slowed more and more and more until you are rooted uh, for 0.75 seconds. So this is a total of 1.75 seconds of slow with a 0.75 seconds of root at the end. But that's not all that it does. If the god is above 30 hysteria, it will lash out. It will lash out at nearby targets um, who stand too close to your original target, and it will also root them careful, for Bryce. one second. Plus, they're injected by venom that um, deals the full damage over time that the original target took immediately. Baron has a lot of reading in his kit. A lot of reading. Um, I want to clarify on the second ability uh, by what I meant. I'm going to pop my ulti here for CC immunity, throwing it down onto the Ares, giving him the big suck. We'll talk about that ability, of course, in a little bit as well. Still looking for the Ares. Get that big damage slow. Unfortunately, it just barely misses. I want to clarify on the second ability. Uh, you always get the heal from this ability. It is the movement speed um, the movement speed slash cleanse that you only get uh, when they are uh, 30 hysteria and above. I wasn't super uh, clear on that. You get the heal all the time, but when they're above 30 hysteria, that's when you get the spirit cleanse low effect and the increase uh, to your movement speed. The heal always, always props. Oh yeah, they are really, they're really holding down the W key. We could probably actually gank this i'm looking towards aries i want to land my three first because now that i landed my three i can guarantee to land my one and my two it wasn't quite enough to kill aries but there we go right on through and finally your bread on butter your bread on butter bread and butter bread on butter what bread and butter on baron is going to be your ultimate the big fat suck itself life of the party when Baron is inside his ultimate, he takes 35% reduced damage. Um, and he starts to drag enemies towards him that are in the cone range. When an enemy god gets too close, it does a big fat burst damage to them. So it's a tick while they're being brought in. You get burst damage when they get hit. On top of that burst damage, you also get 10% max health damage. A 1.5 second stun. And you will notice that this ability sometimes pulls targets in faster. And sometimes it's slower. The reason why it does that is it is based off the target's hysteria. So every time this ability procs on you, it's going to give you 5 hysteria. And eventually, if you have over... Um, what is the exact hysteria number? I think it's 30. If you have over, I do believe it's 30 hysteria. Uh, the, the movement speed pulls you in even faster. I'm trying to find exactly where it says it in this ability. I know it does. Oh, no! But we're trying to read an ability while we get ganked at our red buff. What the... Cuckoo all down, Robin stuff down. It gives me time to actually find an enemy got it too close. Take a large amount of health. Okay, it's there. This ability persists for three more sides. So God pulled. I know it says it somewhere. Enemy gods within range are pulled in. Blah, 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 blah. Does it say it over here? Anyways, it says it somewhere. I know that it does. Um, but basically, when they have the hysteria effect on them, uh, 30 and above, uh, they get pulled in even faster. They get pulled in even faster. So what we're looking to do here on Baron, as far as our build, normally uh, on mages right now, you're going straight into the divine ruin. 
Uh, luckily, this game, I didn't need anti-heal against this composition. So I get to get away with a more streamlined Baron build. Which is going to be getting full CDR right off the bat. I like to build Baron at the start, kind of like you would imagine building a Nox. Get full CDR as fast as humanly possible. You want to be able to spam your abilities in order to get Hysteria up on targets and to apply all of your wonderful CC effects. You've got a heal, a movement speed buff, a cleanse, a attack speed slow, a power slow, an actual slow, a root, a pull, a stun. You've got so much CC and just stuff from your kits that you can apply. So you want full 40% cooldown on Baron ASAP. As far as on top of that, in general, what I'm looking to do in uh, on Baron is I'm looking to get proc effect items. Um, so items like Soul Reaver, items like Soul Gem. These are what we're gonna be looking for. We wanna be getting proc damage on our ability because of how fast we're gonna be spamming them. We wanna get the bonus damage off when we do that. I'm gonna give Ares this nice suck. You can see that nice movement speed as he starts to get sucked in even harder. Should be able to put down the Ares right there, no problem. Remember to be popping your Baron's Brew potions. Uh, you don't have to, you know, worry about them a ton. You don't have to worry about min-maxing it uh, because every time you go back to the base, you're gonna go ahead and get that back. I'm surprised he hasn't used this two yet. There's the two. Took him a while actually to uh to go ahead and use that. That should be another kill right there. Heard the cuckoo will come through. Great play there from Athena. So you can kind of see the combination that we are looking to do. Um, right now on Baron, step one, you can see I'm using my ultimate. Uh, because it gives me CC immunity, I am using it as a defensive ultimate against the Ares. Every time the ult Ares has been going to ulti me, I throw down my own ulti. It's a it's a very long channel, three and a half seconds, uh, which means that I can just sit in my ulti while Ares is ulting, uh, and then I can just give him the suck right after he comes out of his ult. So he thinks he ends up uh, pulling me, but I'm the one that's going to end up pulling him every single time. Uh, the only way to basically stop Baron uh, from pulling you is either get outside of that cone range on the ulti, or uh, to pop a CC immunity, uh, something like beads. Unfortunately, I'm gonna be in trouble right here. I wanted to give the suck to that cuckoo. I actually got out of the range of the Ares before I could ulti. I wanted to uh, just try to give him the suck. Ended up working out fine. I do need to be a little bit careful around this Ares right now because I do not have uh, my ultimate or my beads up. You can see that my ulti's already back up in 30 seconds though, because of the full CDR. Your standard combination. I'm gonna go right into uh, a Soul Reaver and grab me a Sentry Ward. Your standard combination on Baron is gonna be three, one, two. Three, one, two. Pop your three first. If you can get good at hitting Baron three, you'll do a lot of damage on Baron. It's the ability that you need to hit the most. It's the Thanatos Scythe, the Fafnir one. It's what makes the kit come together. And even though it's the ability we're going to level up max, it's the most crucial ability to hit because it is that ramp up slow and root. The second you get your root on your three, you can throw down your one and your two almost at the exact same time. You can do two one or one two, doesn't matter. You'll get that full damage combination on them. Speaking of full damage combinations, dude, I'm going down. That's a cuckoo ult. That's a Robin ult. That's a lot of damage right there. We're going to get the Aegis as our second active this game to try to live through some of these ultis coming down on top of us. Um, so your three will also uh, give them enough hysteria, basically, to get the bonus effects on your one and your two. Um... So it basically puts all of your abilities uh, into Hysteria range, uh, which is great. And it lets you follow up on those strong. On Baron, your actives are pretty much always going to be Beads and Aegis. Uh, you don't really have an option to go anything else. Uh, on Immobile Mages, you're, you're, you're pretty much stuck. 
going the bead to nay just every single game you can see how easy it is for them to full dive on me uh this is because baron does not actually have a getaway skill now he's better than like al pooch right like al pooch doesn't have a getaway skill and al pooch is garbage baron isn't garbage at all he's most certainly not garbage he's not meta and you don't like see him in ranked um but he is uh viable in like a casual setting I'm gonna try to grab this red for some extra damage on my rotation over again. Try to throw down the two on Mulan to heal my Izanami. Izanami actually got out of the range of that. I'm looking for Cuckoo back over this wall. I knew he was gonna be there. That's a bead down on Cuckoo. Gonna go ahead and throw down the root onto Ares. Throw down the two. Gonna give me that bonus movement speed. Get a little power debuff on these guys. Try to run around this corner. Throw down the heal for myself. You can see that even though I'm full damage, I'm actually kind of tanky. Now that I've got the Athena ult on me, I'm gonna go ahead and use my suck to bring in a target to land on the Athena ult. Yeah, you did good. On Baron, you're not necessarily always looking to suck a target as fast as you can god baron's a fun god to talk about um sometimes you want to make the suck last a little bit extra long god um and so what you do on baron is in your ultimate if a target is getting close to hopping in your coffin you look away from them you look away from them um, and that will stop sucking them in and then you go and you look back at them and you start sucking them in again Keep in mind your ultimate lasts for three and a half seconds and sometimes you want to utilize it as that maximum CC duration and not necessarily just the burst damage. Maybe you're trying to wait for a teammate to get to you. Maybe you're trying to um to have a team be able to follow up with some really nice damage. So I'm going to show you. If I go, I don't want to necessarily... Oh, this didn't work at all because she actually ulted right into me. Um, she actually ulted through my coffin with CC immunity, which was a smart play. Um, I'll try to do it a little bit later on. We're going to get our Soul Reaver online. I'm going to go into a Soul Gem. We're going to be over capped on CDR um, with Soul Gem for now. Not a big deal. We're going to sell Mage's Blessing eventually. I'm not worried about it. I just want the bonus healing uh, and damage that I'm going to get from all these abilities that I'm spamming. Baron's abilities uh, almost all go through walls. Uh, your one will go through walls and hit a target. Your two, you can throw over walls. Your suck will, um, your suck will pull people kind of against the wall. Uh, and your three will not go through walls. Um, so you can throw you can throw the two over a wall, the one over the wall. You can give a nice little suck as long as they're in range uh, of, of of the cone. Uh, but your three your three does not go through walls on Baron. It's your only ability that is not uh, not wall proof. It's the only one. Um. So on the build, you can see we're going to go into that soul gem. We're going to be getting those proc effects. Um, as per usual, we're going to get a ob shard uh, for our major penetration item. Uh, when we have that plus the soul reaver, we're going to have all the percent pen that we need, uh, depending on the exact game as well. You might have needed to go divine ruin earlier. If you needed to go divine ruin earlier, you wouldn't have this Kronos pendant. Uh, which means that getting the soul gem would actually be bringing you up to 30% CDR instead of over capping uh, at 50% for now. Uh, so keep that in mind. Uh oh. Ah, it's gonna be a big fat dead Baron. You can see why Baron uh, doesn't get played at a high level of competition uh, because unfortunately there is just nothing that Baron can do about that. Even if I use my ultimate defensively right there, the Cuckoo ulti is uh, still going to one-shot me. That was a really good Izanami ult. So, as far as what we're looking to do in team fights on Baron, uh, we do provide good damage, but we're mostly uh, what I would call a uh, kind of like a supporty mid lane. 
We get good damage because of our procs on things like Soul Reaver and Soul Gem and Mage's Blessing and all this stuff. But we're really just looking to um, provide CC, uh, provide healing. We get great healing off the two. We're going to get great healing combined with Soul Gem. We're going to get great uh, damage reduction from the one and roots and slows. So that's what we're looking to provide um, for now. At the very end of the game, uh, we will be able to 100 to 0 a squishy. Um, so like a cuckoo or something, uh, we will 100 to zero at the later stages of the game. Not quite yet. Uh, right now we can probably do like 60, 70% of their health. Uh, but we're not like, uh, we're not like a Scylla Poseidon one shot type god. But Baron does force people, uh, to play a little bit differently so that they're not in range of the suck. You get a range of Baron Suck with your beads down or something, and you get yourself in a lot of trouble. So Baron does make the enemy play the game slightly different. We should probably group up right now and shove mid. Um, your three is your primary ability to set up your damage, but it can also be used as peel right here you're gonna see me go to pull in this mulan i'm not even gonna get uh the pull off but you can just see that i was getting so much cc duration onto so many targets i get myself out of the ultimate uh you can cancel yourself you can cancel yourself out of baron ulti if you need to with a right click uh, i almost needed to in that situation but i did not end up having to at the very end there uh but you can see that even if they don't necessarily reach the coffin you can still get so much crowd control value uh out of the ultimate you can also see that i am almost never using my one and two uh without my three first that's because if you can guarantee the damage on your one and two by using your three first why wouldn't you so like i said when you're doing your damage your combination is going to be three one two or three two one whatever your preference is when you're looking for defense when you're looking to peel for yourself um your two priority abilities are going to become your two and your three your one can be nice because it does reduce the damage that people do to you right but what you're really looking to do is to get out of a sticky situation I'm actually not good at securing objectives on Baron, so instead, I'm gonna suck Mulan away from the objective, rely more on the Izanami to secure this, and then I'm just gonna CC Mulan so she's not in range to steal the Fire Giant. So when you're trying to peel for yourself, you're looking more so to land the three on a target. So this is something you're gonna do very, um, very often. What you'll do is you have a target initiate on you. You'll three on them. You'll see the root about the proc so you know they're gonna get close to you. Then you turn around, throw down the two and run away. They'll get rooted basically inside of that two by the time they were chasing you. And then because you landed your three first, then your two, you'll make sure that you have your hysteria stacks on the enemy. Uh, which means that not only will your two heal you, it'll also give you that cleanse and movement speed buff to really help get yourself away. That will really help you. Um, so that's why I like to use my three first before the two, um, both when I am initiating the fight and when I uh, am using it as a peeling ability. Now, keep in mind, uh, kind of like how in the RDO guide, that one time we use our stun defensively in order to get more protections to not die to an ability. You can also do that with Baronalt. Baronalt does give you those 35% uh, mitigation, which means that if you have like absolutely no way to get out of like a Kraken or something, you can pop your ultimate to make sure that you take 35% less damage from the Kraken, and then you're already following up with your own damage uh, because the suck is going off. Right back. So don't be afraid to use it as a defensive ability, whether that's for CC immunity from air result, whether it's to get the minus damage reduction, whatever the situation may be. Okay, we're gonna get ourselves an obsidian shard online. I'm going to get rid of my mage's blessing. And then we're going to buy an item 
uh, that you almost never see, uh, particularly on mages. This one will rock your socks off, but I actually think it's a crucial late game item for Baron. We're gonna grab that tier two tower over in the right lane. Your team has destroyed a right enemy tower. We're getting great farm off of this, great gold. I'm gonna go grab our uh, red buff. Just kidding, no I'm not because they've got somebody over here doing all of our buffs, so I'm not gonna grab the red buff. We should look for a fight though. We've got fire giant for another 70 seconds. If we can just look for like a pickoff, that would be huge. And it looks like we're gonna find it. Aries is gonna be the one caught out. That is a very fast Aries. I'm trying to wait on my suck as long as I can. Because if I suck too early, here it is. Aries goes in for the ulti. I've got the suck going. He gets sucked right back in. And we all get cuckoo ulted. I land the root. Ooh, this is bad. I landed the root onto Mulan, but then I didn't get the uh, the two. But that two will land on the Mulan. Now look how fast everybody is. That's a huge movement speed buff for the entire team. We need to quickly hop on this Robin. Robin unfortunately dodges those abilities. No problemo. I've got to use my beads to avoid that cuckoo okay. slope. Otherwise, I'm gonna die to the tornado. Trying to get back over to the Robin. Use that one really quick to grab the kill, and we can head back down the mid lane. My ultimate is back up in three seconds. Actually, it doesn't look like the team wants to, uh, that's fine. The team doesn't want to keep shoving. We can back it up and we can get ready for the next fire giant. So what we're gonna do here, even though this is going to overcap me still in CDR, we're gonna get a shield of regrowth. Now, eventually I'm selling my boots and I'm not gonna get a cooldown item as a replacement. So we'll have the 40% cap CDR, which means we'll be capping CDR by 10% with our red potion, but never really worry about over capping uh, CDR by 10% with your red pot. That's not a big deal. Uh, it shouldn't affect your build at all. Shield of regrowth procs on your two on Baron. It's going to give you a little bit of HP to stay alive. Attack. It's going to give you a little bit of action, but most importantly, it's going to give you the zoom zoom on your heal, which is really helpful. You can see the little side suck, side suck. That way I can pull the Aries in longer, get more CC duration out of the ultimate like we talked about earlier. Yeah. You did but good. this is going to be a crucial item on Baron at the late stages of the game. For one, chasing down kills, and two, getting away when you get like Rob and ulti. I find it to be a mandatory item uh, for the meta right now uh, for Baron. When you're playing him in full damage mode, I don't necessarily think you need this item if you're like playing a more defensive like solo lane Baron, but for a mid lane Baron, when basically your only hope of getting away uh, is gonna be it. I think it's just so good. Gotta hide off to the side right now. Just kind of waiting. Mulan does not have, oh no, I missed my three. That was a free heal opportunity. There's a Robin behind us that we gotta make sure we put down. I gotta use my ulti for CC immunity right here. Okay. Finally, got that heal. Now zoom, zoom, baby, get me out of trouble. Gonna go back into the fight looking for Mulan. I'm not gonna hit it though, and I might die for that. Ooh, I've actually got 29 HP left. This is risky, but there's potentially a game end right now, so I'm gonna stick around. Even though this is super risky. Try to give some heals for my team. I am gonna get that. And we live to see another moment 
it is extremely hard to push a phoenix into a cuckoo you can see that right now so so very difficult to push into a cuckoo because it was tornado clearing the entire wave yes. it makes him one of the best if not the best uh phoenix defender in the game he doesn't suffer from any of the uh, like negative consequences that like Al Pooch does, who's a great Phoenix defender, but he's just so bad at everything else. <laughs> at the very end of the game, if uh, this keeps going and you can get a sixth item, you're gonna get your elixir of speed, of course. We're gonna sell our boots, and our last item is gonna be a rod up to Hootie. Our last item is going to be a Rod of Tehuti because not only does the Rod of Tehuti uh, passive proc on our damage when target to blow 25, uh, well, excuse me, when target is below 50% health, but this also buffs our healing by 25% and when our teammates and ourselves are below 50% health. So it buffs both your healing when you need it and your damage when you need it. Get some nice damage out over there. So Rod of the Booty is a great final item to finish up with on Baron. We've still got Fire Giant for 30 seconds. We should really be looking for the fight right now. I really want to get everybody up in here. I'm just trying to land as many combinations as I can. You can actually see the root effect that just went out. We've got that bonus movement speed. And we're gonna start chasing down this fight. Mulan is getting themselves out. There's the Cuckoo ulti! But that was a really good. I'm giving Ares the suck as much as I can. We're diving on in, trying to look into the back line, landing the heal once again for the movement speed. Pushing further in. We gotta be very careful right now because we've got Robin in the back line so what i'm gonna do now is i'm gonna use this movement speed to just try to oh run away there's no running away when there's a cuckoo around the corner now is there that is unfortunate i didn't realize the cuckoo had already gotten some back unfortunately the entire team just died to one robin um we just got three members killed by one robin while we were trying to fight uh three members ourselves uh, near their Phoenix line, which is just unfortunately some bad gameplay. Your left tower is under attack. Robin also a very, very difficult pick. Like I said, if you had to pick two gods that you didn't want to go against, um, on Baron, it's going to be Camazots and Robin. Uh, they've got so many ways to just immunity frame the CC uh, that you're outputting. And so you've got to be very careful uh, about picking Baron in the comps like that. Like I said, I wouldn't pick Baron overall um, in like a competitive setting. But if you just want to play him for funsies, uh, I think he's quite viable in a, a for funsies type scenario. They are probably doing the old fire yeah, and Of course they are. So now we're going to be a little bit on the defensive. So we're going to get to see some defensive Baron action. So we gotta go ahead and we can actually maybe look for a pickoff if somebody does anything too aggressive. Enemy missing. I mean, Robin went to the other side, so I'm gonna look for Mulan. See if we can't get a kill. Doesn't look like it. Now we gotta back it up. Just looking for a little pickoff potential. Baron's really good at that, actually. Um, because of the root uh, followed up with the pull out of position. Sometimes you can try to find somebody um, where they shouldn't be. 33 minute marker, so there's no point for us to uh, defend on the T2s. This is basically the Phoenix defense point of the game. So we're just going to sit on back on our phoenixes and chill out. See Robin and Ares over left lane. They're going to go for potentially left. They might try to do a full, a full uh, tier two swipe. 
Now we're gonna back it on up. I'll back it up. I'll back it up. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Get some defensive wards out, particularly defensive sentries. You always want to make sure that this little area is warded when you're defending your phoenixes. So that way your mage or your hunters, whoever, has somewhere safe to stand. Athena is too far forward right now. She's got to be careful. I'm going to try to give him a little heal to make sure he can live through whatever damage they're outputting into him. Looks like they are going to continue to shove through this mid lane. Looks like they might want to just go for it. Hey, it's going to be a Ares. Oh, that's fine. You know what time it is. I'm going to turn around. Maximizing once again the CC time from my ultimate. Unfortunately, my Aegis doesn't go off. That happens sometimes in Smite. I had just gotten out of the ultimate uh, animation, but Smite wasn't quite ready to respond to the Aegis time. It only looks like they're going to get one Phoenix off of this. They dumped a lot into me. That was Mulan ult, Cuckoo ult, Raven ult, Ares ult, just trying to kill the one Baron. So that's not a horrible trade for us. Keep buying sentry wards at the end of the game and make sure you don't stop buying those sentry wards. Uh, we're still working on the rod of Tahuti in order to get the extra damage and healing off. And there's really no way to position ourselves on Baron uh, to be outside of the range uh, of that front line. So we just got to kind of do what we got to do and uh, do the best to use our movement speed to try to avoid that damage. Kind of like the same concept as Hera. Obviously, Hera is a much better god than Barret. But the same kind of concept where Hera doesn't have an escape skill. She's just using movement speed to try and avoid a lot of the damage output onto her. Obviously, it's different because hers also gives her a shield. Uh, and Baron doesn't have a defensive ability at all directly, so. But that's the same concept. You're trying to utilize movement speed as the defensive aspect of your kit. Now we gotta head back over and get ready to defend the fire giant. We only lost one Phoenix and it's the enhanced fire giant. So we should try to defend this. Woo! Gotta make sure we get out uh, some proper wards, though. We've got the vision right here. They do not. That is a speedy Ares. We're gonna get the Magi's off of him, which is nice. Keep popping those Barons. Oh, God. Yep. It's a Robin. It's a Robin ult. I'm gonna try to kill this Robin as fast as humanly possible! Unfortunately, he's just not dead. They dropped so much into your boy once again. And we just can't quite kill the Robin. They get three, they're gonna get four, and that's gonna be uh, the game right there. Uh, but that's basically what you're looking to do on Baron. Uh, you're looking to try to just basically utilize your movement speed in order to, in order to live in those fights. Uh, the only reason why we were living so long in that fight is because of how able we were to move around with the two movement speed plus the extra from the shield of regrowth. And of course, you know, you can try to utilize your your three root and stuff like that as well. Uh, we didn't get any follow up really uh, from the ultimate. Uh, a lot of the times what you're looking to do as well with Baron is you're kind of like a setup god. So you're trying to use your ultimate to set up your team. Uh, unfortunately, we didn't have a ton of follow-up on that setup. We didn't really have um, a great team composition for it. And we didn't have um, super coordinated team fights uh, for following up there on the ultimate. It's kind of like Athena. We kind of had the double setup with the Athena and the Baron. Um, and we didn't have a bunch of follow-up after the setup. But that's kind of what you're looking to do on Baron. He actually has a decent healing output. You can see that we outputted 4K healing. We did 34,000 damage. Um, so it ain't no uh, 
He ain't no super meta god, but he is respectable, and that's how you're looking to play your best.